Hey guys, it's your brother in Christ West, and thanks for joining me today. So today we're going to be talking about three scriptures. I got to go through them fast. I've got three minutes. Okay, here we go. Matthew 7, scariest verse in the Bible, right? Is it for believers or unbelievers? It's for unbelievers. It's very clear. I used to believe that it was for believers, and it's not. I was wrong. Here it is. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Pause. You need to write that down and go, what is the will of the Father in heaven? Let's go to John 6. I'll show you because I know it. It says here, verse 28, then they said to him, who is they? These are Pharisees. If you read it in context, it's talking about Pharisees, people who are not believing in him. Jesus is performing all these signs and miracles, and they're still not believing him. And he says it. So I'll show you. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Because they don't believe that Jesus is God. Then Jesus answered them and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe, not you work out your commandments, not that you be a good Christian, not that you do this, 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 not eat pork, celebrate this day, this day, this day, this day, not that you get up and repent and doing all these single, every single thing like this. It says, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom, or believe in him whom he sent. Then he said down here, verse 35, he says, Jesus said to them, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, yet you do not believe. That is a lot of people on TikTok. They have, they, they feel like they've seen Jesus. They have a picture of Jesus. They have a, they have a belly that is, that is their own desires of Jesus, but they do not actually believe in Jesus. And that goes back to Matthew 7, where they say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do? You're presenting your works to the, to the Messiah, the actual person that can save you. You're saying, didn't I do cast out demons, perform mighty miracles, and do wonders in your name, and he'll say to you, I don't even know you. Let's keep moving. It says here, um, uh, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and I can't lose, and I will not by no means cast out, for I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father, right? All that he has given me, I should lose nothing. That means Jesus can't lose you. That means you can't lose your salvation because the Father selected you. The Father has picked you from times past. Your free will agrees with his will. They come into play. Jesus gets you. Father gets you. So how are you getting out of that? Doesn't make any sense. Make it make sense. Okay, this is the will of the Father who sent me. That all I should lose, I, uh, I should lose nothing. I will raise it up on the last day. And then this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have everlasting life. Now let's go to Luke 13. Here we go. Luke 13 says it this way. Strive to, verse 24, strive to enter the narrow gate. I got, I got 30 seconds left. I say to you, I will seek, you will seek to enter, but you'll not be able. Once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, he begins to stand outside and say, Lord, Lord, those are those famous words again, open for us and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you or where you are from. And then they will say, didn't we eat? We ate with you. We drank in your presence. You taught in our streets. And he'll say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So you can you can eat with Jesus. You can sit in his presence. You can listen to his sermons. You can uh, cast out demons. You can perform mighty miracles and wonders in his name. And he'll still say to you, I don't know how many of those were. He can still say to you, I do not know you. Why is that? Because you never actually believed, never had faith on Christ. And if you want to find out what that looks like to actually have faith on Christ, read Matthew 7, 24 through 29 to clear that up for you. You'll see the believer and the unbeliever.